What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today I want to talk about the Xbox One X. This is a console that I think is technically coming out today, and I've gotten to play it a tiny bit. Up to this point, I've been very vocal about the fact that I did want one. I was going to purchase it just because it did seem so intriguing. This half generation has been taking a bit to actually kind of get me on board. The PlayStation 4 Pro is interesting, but the upgrades didn't seem substantial. Something seemed a little bit different though about the Xbox One X. Now that I've tried it though, I just have no interest in actually getting one. Now, let me be clear, I'm not actually hating on anybody else for getting one. In fact, I talked to some people on the Iron Lords podcast and they are extremely happy with the fact that they're getting theirs. No hate at all on them. This is a personal choice because I feel like the upgrade between the Xbox One, which I absolutely love, and the Xbox One X is so tiny. Now, it all comes down to value. I'm a very, very big person about value. It has to be enough of an upgrade to actually signify that price tag. There are some Black Friday deals coming up where you can get an Xbox One, just a standard Xbox One S, for under $200. That's pretty crazy, and I think if you don't have one, this is a great opportunity to get one. The idea that it would cost $500 to get an Xbox One X is just insanity to me because the graphical fidelity is not that different. Now, when I played it, it was on a 4K television, and it was beautiful. It was amazing. It was some of the best graphics I've ever seen, but it still wasn't that big of a leap. I guess I wanted something a little bit more in the difference between 1080 and 4K. There just doesn't seem to be that much of a gap. A lot of times when I see like those simulated images, it'll be like this giant glorious waterfall out in the forest. And it made me realize that those are images that were produced specifically for 4K. They're shot on a 4K TV, uh, for shot on a 4K camera for 4K TVs. Playing a game console that is basically trying to upgrade a 1080p resolution image up that high, it doesn't quite have the same effect. Something about it seemed uh, hollow almost. It felt like such an infinitesimal step up. You know, when you went from something like the PlayStation 2 to the PlayStation 3, of course that was a giant jump. The jump between the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 was a lot smaller. And now I'm starting to think that maybe the gap between the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 may be even smaller. It's really making me think that I'm probably never really going to be a big supporter of these half-generation consoles because we're entering an age where it's not about how big and shiny your graphics are, it's more about what you can do with the hardware. I feel like game developers need stronger consoles by default so they can finally have more availability for programming options. Now, that's a big mouthful, but let me explain what I mean. I wish that we had games that were able to simulate bigger environments with lower load times. Imagine playing something like Gears of War and there's literally thousands upon thousands of units all individually carrying out their own orders, doing missions, getting on aircraft and flying to other sections of the map and you actually have to tra track them all down instead of just being in more confined environments. Even the most beautiful, amazing games on the consoles we have right now they're pretty small in a way. Typically, open world games have to sacrifice something in order to get that. They need longer load times or less people hanging around. I feel like the next generation of gaming is, is going to be all about size and scope. And playing the Xbox One X made me realize that. This isn't a console that sucks. I'm not at all saying it's overpriced. I just feel like Microsoft developed it hoping that we would all try and jump on board. There seems to be a little bit of a flaw in the thinking of the Xbox One X. So much of it seems built on the idea that people are constantly wanting to buy hardware. Now, there is definitely an audience for that, but I want to say, and this is just an assumption with, I'm really not backing this up with data, it's just completely anecdotal, I think most people actually kind of hate to buy new hardware. There's a certain pride to already having your system, 
putting it on the shelf, and then just spending tons of money on new games. I was talking to a buddy of mine, uh, Sean Long, he's RGT85, a very good YouTuber, and he specifically said, like, the Xbox One X is a cool console, but $500 can buy a lot of games. And he's not wrong. That is a very interesting viewpoint, and very valid in my opinion. That is a giant part of anybody's library. Even if you are somebody who is a big collector like me, $500 goes a very long way. So if you have the choice between getting like 15 new games or one console, that is really, really tough, especially when the console itself isn't really a dramatic upgrade. This seems like... Well, let me make an analogy. So, Sunday morning, I was sitting in a cafe, and there were these two guys talking about soccer. I don't know anything about sports, but they were so passionate about it, it was pretty interesting, so I just kind of eavesdropped. They were explaining that when you play soccer against an opponent, you need to know how good they are at soccer before you fight them, so to speak. You need to be ready for their style of training. And the reason that's important is, apparently, you're constantly trying to trick whoever you're going against in soccer. You need to get past them, so depending on how much training they have, you can try and do stuff like circle right or circle left. And apparently, people who have less training are better at stopping you a lot of times because they're not trying to predict what you're going to do, they're just locked on the ball and nothing else. I feel like Microsoft is accidentally making the mistake of thinking that everybody is that professional soccer player. They think that most people are already trying to predict what the future is going to be, whether it be 4K resolution or ultra high definition Blu-rays. They're trying to go this way and hoping that we went with them. And I think a lot of the market might be people like me. People who are going left, who are okay with a little bit lower graphics or a little bit lower frame rate as long as the games are fun and, more importantly, they're big. I just want stuff that's really going to catch me off guard, tell me a cool story, and do something I haven't seen before. The 4K resolution is nice and, you know, it's stellar to look at, but what is really the point? So right now, I'm just saying that I will not be getting an Xbox One X. I was so on board with it up until I actually saw one in action, and now I realize that it's just for the people who want to go this way while I'm going that way. But what are your thoughts on this? Now, are you somebody who's getting an Xbox One X and why? Is it really just a graphics thing, or is it just that you're trying to get the best experience of the games you already have? I've seen people actually saying that specifically, that it's a luxury item. If you already have a big fancy TV and you're wanting to make the most of it, this is a good way to do it. For me personally, it's a big no-go. But let me you know, know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Man, uh, I don't know. I, I keep wanting that next generation to get here. I think we're probably going to see the PlayStation 5 in like 2019. I think it's going to be announced in 2019. And already, I'm kind of getting hyped for it. Oh, hi. I'm just working on the next video. If you want to see what it is, go ahead and click this button and you can subscribe. Also, if you click these video links, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. Now I'm just going to sit here for a minute and uh, wait for you to subscribe. Oh, I guess I could put on these giant glasses. I literally found these on a roller coaster.